In this video, we're trying to find the fluid pressure at a distance of D beneath the surface of this container of liquid. And I gave the fluid a density of rho. And what we're going to start with is the gauge pressure, which means we're assuming the atmospheric pressure is zero. We're doing everything relative to that. So for the gauge pressure calculation, we can say the pressure at the surface is P naught, and we're calling that zero. So let's get the gauge pressure figured out. And the argument goes like this. I highlighted this rectangular chunk of the fluid, and it's just sitting there. It's static. But gravity must be pulling down on this, so I can put in the force of gravity pulling down on the center of mass. There's mg. And why isn't it accelerating downward? And the answer is that it feels a pressure pushing up on the bottom surface area. Remember, a fluid exerts pressure perpendicular to any surface that it's exposed to. Now, I'm not interested in the pressure exerted at the sides. Those are all sideways forces that are going to cancel out. Um, but it's that pressure exerted on the bottom surface that holds this thing up against the force of gravity. So what's the force exerted by a pressure? If I go back and look at the way we define pressure, pressure is force per unit area, and that means the force exerted by a pressure is pressure times area. So let me just go ahead and throw the A into my diagram. That force upward canceling the force of gravity is P times A. So immediately I have this equality that mg, in other words the weight of the fluid, is equal to the pressure down there at a depth of D times the area of that bottom surface of the rectangular chunk of fluid. Now it's a matter of manipulating this expression and I can figure out what the pressure is at that depth. So first, the mass of the fluid. Well, that's the density of the fluid multiplied by the volume. But I can re-express the volume of the fluid. That would be the area of the bottom surface multiplied by the height. So now I have rho A D G equals P times A. And it turns out the area of this little chunk doesn't matter. Pressure should be the same at a depth of D, no matter what shape we're talking about. And I find out that the pressure is equal to rho G, D. And that's an expression we're going to use about a thousand times while we study hydrostatics. The next thing I want to do is look at a correction for absolute pressure. And now I'm trying to correct for the fact that there is a non-zero pressure at the surface of this liquid. So ordinarily that would just be atmospheric pressure. So I'm just going to call that P naught. So I'm erasing the equals zero on that and we're just going to call it P naught. So there's this principle called Pascal's principle or Pascal's law that if you turn up the pressure at the surface of this liquid, the additional pressure is going to translate throughout the entire liquid just by that additive term. So I can just correct my gauge pressure at depth by just adding the pressure at the surface. So I get P absolute. I should probably put a G on the first one for gauge. So P absolute is going to be whatever the pressure is at the surface plus rho GD. So just a minor correction. Okay, let's apply our new formula to a simple example. So on this one, we're asked to find the gauge pressure 100 meters below the surface of the ocean and express our answer in atmospheres. And one thing I forgot to put on here is that the density of seawater is higher than the density of fresh water. Um, in fact, there's something like 30 kilograms of salt dissolved in every cubic meter of seawater. So it has a density of 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter. I'm asked for gauge pressure, which means I use the first formula, P equals rho GD. And that's 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter times 9.8 meters per second squared and a depth of 100 meters. And when I run the numbers on this, I come out with 1.01 .01 times 10 to the sixth Pascals. I'm asked to express my answer in atmospheres. So I have to remember that atmospheric pressure is 101.3 kilopascals, or 1.013 times 10 to the fifth pascals. And then I do a little bit of unit analysis, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the sixth pascal. times one atmosphere for every 1.013 times 10 to the fifth pascals. And I get 9.97 atmospheres of pressure. So this is a testament to how much more dense water is than air. We are at the bottom of an ocean of air that extends all the way to space. 
and it only generates one atmosphere of pressure. But if you just go 100 meters below the surface of the ocean, you get 10 times that much pressure already.